chapter 2.2 overview. Reality simply consists of different points of view. Margaret Atwood, reference 35. 2.2.1. The goal of grounded theory is to generate a new theory, not to analyze a hypothesis. The goal of grounded theory, the methodology, is to produce a grounded theory, the deliverable. The central idea behind this methodology is to evolve a novel theory through an iterative and continuous interplay between data collection and analysis. This research approach directly contrasts with the hypothesis deductive approach of the traditional scientific method because it includes and emphasizes both inductive and deductive reasoning aimed at developing a new theory rather than strictly deductive reasoning aimed at testing a hypothesis derived from an existing theory. References 36 and 33. In the traditional hypothesis deductive approach, a hypothesis is derived from a previously existing theory and then proven or disproven based on analysis of data. Grounded theory uses a different process where data collection, analysis, and theory development happen simultaneously and iteratively during research until the researcher eventually arrives at theoretical saturation, the point where additional data stops providing additional theoretical insight. Then, after the novel theory has been developed, it is possible to formulate and test hypotheses using the traditional hypothesis deductive approach, reference 36. Grounded theory methodologies are useful in situations where there are not formally defined or existing theoretical frameworks from which to formulate a hypothesis in the first place. The author asserts that this is precisely the case for emerging proof-of-work technologies like Bitcoin. Existing theoretical frameworks don't paint a complete picture of the technology. This could be creating an undetected bias in academic analysis because nobody's asking questions like, should we assume that this is only monetary technology and not something more? To remedy this, grounded theory can be used to develop a novel theory that researchers can use as a new starting point to formulate new hypotheses. The primary deliverable of this grounded theory research endeavor is therefore a new theory, not another hypothesis deductive analysis using the same recycled presumptions. Reference 33. The goal of any grounded theory effort is to discover emergent patterns in analyzed data and to develop a novel generalized theory. Researchers who use grounded theory do so with the intent to provide a usable explanation for an existing phenomenon. As grounded theory researcher Kalia Sebastian Kel Kela Sebastian notes, rather than relying on past analysis or assumptions to highlight the right answers to the wrong questions. Grounded theory pushes researchers to be enthusiastic and driven towards finding the right answers to the right questions. Reference 36, 37, excuse me. The challenge of a grounded theory researcher is to find the right theoretical framework from which to ask the right questions. In their book, which first introduced grounded theory, Glasser and Strauss assert that conventional research methods pressure people into verifying theories rather than attempting to generate new ones. They argue both types of research are equally valid and can be equally as beneficial, especially in fields of research that could be asking the wrong questions because they aren't using an appropriate theoretical framework or fields of research that go stale because they keep asking the same questions over again. Reference 36. There might be some uh, overlap with the stagnation of physics and how we got stuck in failed string theory. Anyway, back to the reading. Generating theory goes hand in hand with verifying it, but many sociologists have been diverted from this truism in their zeal to test existing theories. 
Surely no conflict between verifying and generating theory is logically necessary during the course of any given research. However, undoubtedly there exists a conflict concerning primary pr primacy of purpose reflecting the opposition between a desire to generate theory and a trained need to verify it. Since verification has a primacy, the desire to generate theory often becomes secondary, if not totally lost, in specific researches. Reference 36. 2.2.2 The Interpretist's Approach to Grounded Theory Over the course of the past 50 years, several different approaches to grounded theory have emerged. The most common being classical, interpretist, and constructivist approaches. This thesis utilizes the interpretivist approach championed by the co-creator of the grounded theory methodology, Anselm Strauss. The interpretivist approach to grounded theory differs from other approaches in four primary ways. The first difference is that it allows the researcher to be engaged with the data and to actively make their own interpretations of it rather than striving to be a distant and detached, as distant as detached from data analysis as possible, restricting oneself exclusively to other people's interpretation of the data. References 37 and 36. The second difference with the interpretivist approach is the with the inter interpretivist approach to grounded theory is that it encourages the use of prior knowledge to influence the interpretation of data. The, inter the interpretivist approach of grounded theory allows for re researchers to level prior knowledge on a given subject to strengthen the overall research using their own insights on relevant issues. Strauss encourages researchers to be aware of the influences of their prior knowledge so they do not negatively impact their research focus, data collection, and categorization efforts. But he insists that prior disciplinary or professional knowledge is highly valuable and should be incorporated into the inquiry. Reference 33. The ability to utilize prior knowledge is the primary reason why the author chose the interpretivist approach to grounded theory, as it allows the author to incorporate his own professional experience into the interpretation of collected data. The author is a field grade officer in the military and a weapons system development engineer with subject matter expertise in blast and ballistics engineering, electronic warfare, satellite system design, and software design, who was part of the founding team of officers who stood up the United States Space Command and United States Space Force. The author has more than a decade of experience with physical security, system safety, and software development missions for the DoD, which can be useful for detecting patterns and developing insights about emergent proof-of-work technologies that appear to be closely related to cybersecurity. Critics of the interpretivist approach to grounded theory argue that incorporating one's own experiences into the interpretation of data can bias the result. If you're trained to be a hammer, the critique goes, then you're more likely to see a nail. Strauss argues that this phenomenon is a primary advantage to the interpretivist approach because anal analogical thinking is a core part of theory development. In other words, the hammer's inclination to see an a nail is a good thing because it can uncover new insights and patterns that were previously undetected by those who don't have the same disciplinary or professional knowledge as the hammer. In a crowd full of screwdrivers who only see a screw, it can be useful for a hammer to enter the scene to explain why it sees a nail, especially if the phenomenon being examined is indeed a nail that nobody recognizes yet because they aren't thinking like a hammer thinks. The author has a niche field of expertise. If we assume that his interpretation of data related to the subject of Bitcoin is biased, then we must also admit that this interpretation can be no more biased than the interpretation of financial or economic theorists on data related to the subject of Bitcoin. It could therefore be useful for people to listen to a different interpretation considering how all interpretations are biased and few people analyzing Bitcoin have the same background as the author. If the goal of existing executive orders is to investigate the national strategic security implications of technologies like Bitcoin for the sake of developing informed p 
pub public policy, then it could be useful to consider the interpretation of the U.S. National Defense Fellow, the person whose full-time job is to investigate the national strategic security implications of new technologies. Just begging to be heard, this man. And he needs to be. The cross-pollination of insights derived from a researcher's field of expertise is something to encourage, Strauss argues, not something to condemn. Prior disciplinary or professional knowledge greatly enhances the development of the theory because it empowers analogical thinking and makes the researcher more attentive to relevant matters from different bodies of knowledge that would otherwise go unnoticed by other people without similar expertise. Researchers endeavoring to perform interpretive grounded theory carry into their research the, the sensitizing possibilities of their training, reading, and research experience, as well as explicit theories from outside disciplines that might be useful if played against systemically gathered data in conjunction with theories emerging from analysis of these data. Reference 33 and 37. <clears throat> a third major difference with the interpretist approach to grounded theory is that it allows for the researcher to have vaguely established research questions prior to data collection, rather than not being allowed to have any form of preset research question prior to data collection, no matter how loose or vague. This was another reason why the author favored the interpretist approach, as the author already had a vaguely established research question prior to starting the research. What are the natural strategic security implications of Bitcoin? It's the man's job. The fourth major difference with the interpretivist approach to grounded theory is related to literature reviews. The interpretivist approach allows the researcher to incorporate the literature review into the data collection process so that it can be used for data analysis to make data comparisons to stimulate new observations and to confirm or explain certain results therefore rather than completing a literature review prior to or after data collection a researcher using interpretivist grounded theory can incorporate re review prior to or after data collection i'm sorry a researcher using interpretist grounded theory can incorporate or blend the literature review into the theory itself. The reader should note that this thesis does not have a separate or distinct chapter for the literature review like a traditional thesis would have, particularly the ones that, which utilize the traditional scientific method. Instead, the literature review of this thesis is woven into the development of the theory across multiple chapters. Reference 33, 37. Chapter 3.2.3, nope, that should be chapter 2.2.3. Common pitfalls among, common pitfalls to avoid when developing grounded theories. One of the most commonly cited mistakes of researchers using the grounded theory methodology is that they have become too self-restrictive. Corbin and Strauss emphasize that qualitative research is not meant to have a lot of structure or rigid approach to analysis. It is an interpretive, very dynamic, free-flowing process. And unless researchers understand the basics of what they are trying to do, they lose these aspects of analysis. Their research becomes superficial and fails to provide the novel insights to human behavior that give qualitative research its dynamic edge. Reference 38. Another common problem associated with this methodology is that researchers often struggle to find the right way to summarize or explain complex ideas using abstraction and inductive reasoning. A core goal of an interpretive approach to grounded theory is finding the right way to break down a, and better understand complex social phenomenon using systems thinking techniques like using systems thinking techniques like abstraction, but without oversimplifying the issue at hand. Strauss describes this challenge as follows. The world of social phenomenon is bafflingly complex. How to unravel some of that complexity to order it, not to be dismayed or defeated by it. How, to, how not to avoid the complexity nor distort interpretation of it by oversimplifying it out of existence. 
This is, of course, an old problem. Abstraction inevitably simplifies. Yet to comprehend deeply, to order, some degree of abstraction is necessary. How to keep a balance between distortion and conceptualiza conceptualization. Reference 38. To mitigate the challenges of having to connect the dots between multiple different fields of knowledge, some researchers will deliberately avoid using diverse theoretical frameworks when performing their grounded theory analysis and instead cho choose to stick to familiar areas of expertise. To put it in simpler terms, researchers are sometimes tempted to avoid chasing the rabbit down the rabbit hole if it starts to appear like it's leading them too far away from their comfort zone. Strauss warns against this behavior because it can cause grounded theories to become too categorically narrow. He argues that one of the primary values of the interpretive approach to grounded theory is that it allows for the exploration of a given phenomenon in very diverse and perhaps even counterintuitive fields of knowledge. He asserts that the researchers should seek, seek to utilize a wide array of concepts from different fields of knowledge to showcase interested patterns and produce conceptually dense theories. The more diverse the subject matter within a given theory, the more intellectually satisfying the results can be. In his words, part of the risk is that users don't understand important aspects of the methodology, yet claim to be using it in their research. For instance, they discover a basic process but fail to develop it conceptually because they overlook or do not understand that variation gives a grounded theory analysis conceptual richness. Reference 33. Without incorporating varied data from separate fields of knowledge, Strauss warns that researchers can end up writing sterile theories that don't provide novel, unique, or interesting insights. Strauss asserts that being overly restrictive with inductive research and not utilizing the grounded theory methodology's strength of flexibility is a missed opportunity that quite frankly produces boring results. It's okay for researchers to analyze previously developed theories that were restrictive with their approach, but he urges researchers not to allow previously developed theories to restrict the development of their own theory. Thoughtful reaction against restrictive prior theories and theoretical models can be salutary, Strauss explains, but too rigid a conception of induction can lead to sterile or boring studies. Reference 33. To avoid these pitfalls, the author deliberately incorporated concepts from highly diverse fields of knowledge. Most of the core concepts involved in this theory have nothing to do with finance, money, or economics. Instead, the core categories of this theory are derived from fields like biology, neuroscience, computer science, and systems security. They incorporate concepts related to natural selection, dominance hierarchies, human metacognition, political science, military theory, and even strategic nuclear policy. This theory is intentionally different from than any other approach to analyzing Bitcoin because the author believes that a different approach to analyzing Bitcoin is what's needed.